Sometimes you hear that when you practice. You shouldn't be focused on getting results. The extreme version of that idea is that meditation should be totally purposeless, totally useless. Of course, when you hear people saying that they meditate without any purpose, without any sense that it's going to be good for anything, they're hoping for a result. They're hoping to impress you. Every action has a result, and we act for the sake of results. And the question of being focused on getting results comes down to there are skillful ways and unskillful ways of being focused that way. So it's good to note the distinction. After all, the Buddha said, wisdom begins with the question, what when I do it will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? That's looking for a result right there. Long-term results, lasting results, that's what we want. The question is, how do we get those lasting results? And two wrong ways of being focused on results to get in the way are one, when you want whatever you do to give good results, and two, wanting to have the results as quickly as possible. In the first case, it's simply a case of kind of narcissism. You decide that you want to do something and you want the results to be good, and you get upset when the results aren't good and you complain. And you try to get everybody to agree that, okay, those really are good results. You don't learn anything that way. You just try to force your will on things, and of course things are going to push back. And you can keep it up for a while, but there comes a point where you finally have it all breaks down, and you suffer. The second kind of unskillful way of being focused on results is basically impatience. We do something good and we want results right away, without taking into consideration the fact that we've been doing things for a long time unskillfully, and some of those things are going to be giving their results. So the new and the old are going to be mixed up together. So we have to learn how to accept that, and sometimes it takes a while to develop the skill that we need. And it takes a while, once we've finally got the skill for the results, really to get solid and dependable. So when you find yourself frustrated in the practice, step back a bit and ask yourself, are you being too impatient? Now, patience doesn't mean that you just sit back and be passive. You actually have to actively do good things, try to work on developing a skill. But you want to learn the kind of powers of endurance that allow you to develop something that's going to take a while. We're in this for the long term. We have to learn how to deal with long fallow periods when we're putting in effort and the practice is something that we're doing every day, every day, and the results aren't quite what we want. And one of the important keys to having patience is learning to have a good sense of humor about all this. There was an interesting passage in Slaughterhouse-Five, where the main character, who's in an American prisoner of war, visits the British in their prisoner of war camp. And it's a very different camp. The Americans are sitting around moping and depressed and pretty hopeless, whereas the British are all well-shaven, all well-looked after. They put on plays to entertain themselves. In other words, they learn how to find what is enjoyable in the midst of a long-term project, even when the odds seem against them. You know that story about Shackleton going down to the coast of Antarctica and not even making it to the coast, getting caught in the ice. The ship gets crushed. The men have to make their way all the way across to the island of Georgia. It takes a long time. He doesn't lose anybody. 
And he said a lot of it had to do with the fact that everybody was disciplined. They knew what had to be done. And even though things looked hopeless, they just did what had to be done. Because they knew if there was any hope at all, it was going to depend on their actions. And so Shackleton apparently was really good at keeping people's spirits up as best as possible. One of my favorite stories of ships being caught in the ice was a case where they were looking for the Franklin expedition, which had been a big disaster in an attempt to find the Northwest Passage. And ship after ship was sent to find them, at least the remains of the expedition, if not the living men. And this one ship that went around Cape Horn and went up through the Bering Strait decided to attack the Northwest Passage from the west. And they got stuck in the ice, had to winter over. And so what did they do? The ship's captain decided to teach all the men how to play billiards. Now, back, that was back in the days when billiards was an upper-class sport. But he said, well, forget that. We'll get everybody on board playing billiards. So they went out on the ice and they built a billiard table out of ice. And he taught everybody how to play billiards, and they kept themselves entertained throughout the Arctic winter. You read about the Fram, the, the Norwegian ship that was stuck in the ice. They actually would print a little newspaper with entertaining stories, and people would, put, again, put on plays. There would be entertainment. All of which shows that if you're going to go through fallow periods, you have to keep yourself entertained. And if your sense of humor is good, you can see the irony in your situation, whatever it is. And that keeps you buoyed up. So that even though the results aren't coming as fast as you want them to, it gives you the strength to keep on putting in the effort. There's a similar passage in Joseph and his brothers, where Joseph has been caught, accused of an attempted adultery, thrown in prison. And so he decides to entertain himself by interpreting dreams. He starts uh, interpreting his own dreams, interpreting the dreams of his wardens. Eventually, of course, the Pharaoh has his great dream. And Joseph's talent as a dream explainer, a dream interpreter, finally gets him brought into the presence of the Pharaoh, and he gives the right interpretation. What started out as a pastime actually became his key to get out. You look at the forest masters. All of them have really good senses of humor, because they'd be stuck in the forest. And it's not like you get out there and you finally have no more responsibilities and your practice just goes lickety-split. A lot of us think that okay, because we have this obstacle or that obstacle in our daily lives, that that's what explains why our practice isn't progressing. And if only we had 100% time to give to the practice, everything would go really well. It doesn't happen that way. A lot of times you're out in the forest and nothing seems to be working. Because you're not there alone. You've brought all your memories of the past along with you. You've got to learn how to deal with that. So you learn how to find some humor in the situation. Keep yourself entertained in ways that are in line with the Dharma. And this is how the Ajans became the Ajans. Their senses of humor saw them through. So we do focus on results. We focus on acting in a skillful way and learning from the results of our actions. That's how the Buddha found awakening, and that's how we're all going to find our own awakening, is being very clear about what we're doing, the results we're getting, and what we can do better. So in that case, we are focused on results. But what it means is you have to put your preferences aside. That old Zen saying that the great way is not difficult for those with no preferences doesn't mean you just give up preferences of all kinds. You prefer to get skillful results, and you prefer to gain awakening. But what it means is that you don't stick to your old ways of doing things. 
saying, this is the way I'm going to do things, this is the kind of person I am, and this is how it's going to have to be, and I'm going to get good results that way. They don't come that way. You learn from your actions. That's why we are focused on our actions and on the results. But given that the principle of karma is quite complex, the results may not come as quickly as we'd like. That's where patience comes in. If you're patient about learning from your actions and learning from your results, that's when your focus is on target. And it's in that sense that being focused on results is a really necessary part of the practice. It's simply a matter of learning how to do it right. <laughs>